This presentation concerns clinical competencies and is aimed at people who are actually training um, and working up to the uh, evaluation process for endorsement at the clinical level for their placements. Let's look at um, some of these competencies then. Let's take the first one I've got on the sheet here, which is to listen actively. Well, the therapist uh, must be listening actively to the client uh, in order to um, listen to the person's story, um, for the client to feel accounted for, and most of all, to build up a working relationship and rapport. Two particular things uh, to look out for. One is the ability to summarise by the therapist and secondly the ability to paraphrase by the therapist. If we take summarise, um, that's the ability of the therapist to um, give a brief description uh, of the story uh, to be able to sum up um, what they've heard and feedback that process to the actual client. That's important um, in terms of the client, you know, feeling accounted for, heard, and um, feeling that the therapist is on their side. And it gives the client the chance to hear back uh, their own story. It provides a sense of continuity in the therapy process and allows the client to um, listen, well, to feel listened to, basically. Um, paraphrase in the same ballpark, uh, though it's a much smaller process where a brief uh, couple of sentences might be fed back to the, um, the client. But it has the same purpose, so that the client feels heard, there's a sense of continuity in the process, they feel accounted for, and we have rapport building. Okay, let's move on to the next one on this list, which is um, that the therapist is able to make contracts that they can establish bilateral mutual contracts. Now, the word bilateral is very important here, that it's a two-way contract. It's not just the client um, making the contract, but also that the a therapist has a part to play in this in terms of witnessing the contract, helping them make the contract, and um, it's agreeing to the contract really um, in terms of it being achievable. Um, the per that the client's not setting themselves up to reinforce their script by buying into a contract which is script laden. So contracts need to be mutual as well. As I said, it needs to be made relationally in that mutual process between therapist and client. Contracts need to be established from an adult to you know adult to adult stance, um, not parent to parent or parent to child or child to parent, but a contract in the here and now, adult to adult. And then this contract will be the framework for the therapeutic direction and focus uh, in that therapeutic session. And if there's no overall contract, of course, for general treatment. In the clinical competencies, though, you'll have 20 minutes, and therefore it's the contract which provides the focus for those 20 minutes. And it's very good to come back at the end of the 20 minutes and say, um, you know, just check up whether they have achieved their contract or um, you know where they've moved in terms of the contract, etc. It needs to be a contract for change. It doesn't mean that the, the change will happen in that 20 minutes, but at least the contract's been um, explicit. It's been you know, there for both the therapist and the client to uh, explore. And it could well be an exploring contract, and it usually is an exploring contract, that you will accept uh, uh, in this 20 minutes process anyway. Um, it's also important when you do the contract 
Uh, and you could take five minutes, two minutes, 20 minutes even. Well, pops up 20 minutes, but you might take 15 minutes even uh, making a contract. Usually contracts are made in the first sort of 10 minutes, five minutes of the, the 20 minute session. But um, could take longer, could even take uh, shorter, of course. You might make the contract in a couple of minutes. And the, the contract might be achieved um, after 15 minutes and then you would stop, you wouldn't need the 20 minutes. Uh, or it could be an exploring contract where change would happen uh, later on in the treatment process. Um, you also need to, at the beginning, talk about the sabotage to change. Um, so, in other words, uh, when you make the contract, so somebody says they'd like to be uh, more relaxed rather than depressed, you need to ask the, 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 the person, well, how might you sabotage yourself being relaxed then? And often the contract comes out of the uh, sabotage process question. Uh, you need them to ask, you know, what do they need to do to make that change and maybe what support they've got um, in, in this process. So contracts is, uh, it's, it's an important one and you usually spend quite a bit of time in the 20 minutes uh, making that uh, contract. Okay, clinical interventions from TA theory. Um, well, that's all um, about showing that you can uh, at least talk about at least two TA interventions clinically. That will be done at the end of the 20 minutes. So after the clinical, theory, after the theory, sorry, after the actual clinical practice has happened, um, the evaluator will talk about, <clears throat> you know, what what actual interventions um, you did and, and also talk about um, them in the TA theoretical process. So for example, uh, what injunctions were you working with or what drivers were you working with or what script uh, were you um, witnessing change or, you know, anywhere, anything from that process so that the evaluator has an understanding that you know, <coughs> know um, or can talk TA theory, at least um, two, two, two positions. Another important competency is uh, contact with the clients, that you are main, able to maintain contact with the clients. Um, TA is a contact-oriented psychotherapy. It's essential for building up rapport. Uh, the major methodology that you're aiming for is a sense of attunement. Um, and you've got different types of attunement, of course. You've got developmental attunement. You've got rhythmic attunement. You've got historical attunement. So you have different levels of attunement. Um, but, you know, if you get the attunement right, by definition, uh, you, uh, you'll you have a contact-oriented psychotherapeutic process. Now, of course, um, what usually happens is people uh, are, are break the contact, uh, or, or the, I mean the client attempts to break contact in some way. You have interruptions to contact. So, uh, you know, the evaluator will be looking for how, you know, how, uh, obviously good's a strong, strong word, but how the actual therapist um, is making contact uh, with the actual client. Phenomenological inquiry. Again, remember we have a contact-oriented therapy, but what's important here is that the person can demonstrate the three methods of inquiry, three methods of uh, uh, integrative psychotherapy. Um, they have inquiry, involvement, and attunement. Um, okay, the next one is therapist opens, uh, asks open questions. So that's questions that elicit responses, not just yes or no, that um, uh, the therapist is, is actually um, making sure that the person can uh, talk their story, open freely. So it's more things like, tell me a little bit more about this, or, or something like that, not just, you know, something that determines a yes or no um, answer. I'm okay, you're okay position. Uh, 
Um, very important that the therapist can actually come from a non-judgmental position. is not defining of the other person. And really can keep away from assumptions. Uh, the therapist has uh, an openness and a non-judgmental position. And that this actually needs to be a uh, bedrock, really, of the therapist's position uh, within the whole therapy process. Um, the therapist can facilitate the client to talk openly. Uh, for that to happen, of course, there needs to be a sense of trust between the two people, genuineness and a sense of curiosity, which I think is important in the process, so that the uh, client can feel accounted for uh, and we have a sense of rapport building and trust in the process. Okay, the, the person can, the client, the therapist, I mean, can demonstrate uh, effective interventions using transaction analysis. Um, so there may be things like interventions that help the client move, move out of script, helps the client move between ego states, and that there's a general uh, shift in ego states. And finally, that uh, after the uh, 20 minutes evaluation, the uh, evaluator will be talking about transference and encouraging the, you know, the person taking the evaluation to be able to talk about transference, merely from a position of hypothesis of who they were for the clients, uh, or, or in fact, who, if you take the counter transference position, who the client might be for them. Okay, then. I hope this helps. As I said, the evaluation is usually 20 minutes and then a further 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, with the evaluator talking to the, um, the person about various theoretical issues or how, what they like from the process. Uh, and I think the evaluator needs to actually talk more about in terms of um, pass or defer. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.